गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड टुडे आर टॉपिक इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नॉट ओनली फॉर द गेट एग्जामिनेशन बट ऑल्सो आफ्टर द गेट ऑल्सो वैन यू गो इन टू द इंडस्ट्री यू हैव टू डू मैनी थिंग्स अबाउट दिस टॉपिक द टॉपिक इज फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट नोन एज प्रोसेस डायनोमिक्स एंड कंट्रोल पी डी सी एंड मैनी टाइम्स देर आर क्वेश्चन इन गेट फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक and very few information is provided in the book very very few information the topic name is from the control valve the topic is from this chapter control valve you can find this chapter in the book named as kafner and the data is also given on the internet and in this control valve the topic that i want to teach today is the direct acting and the indirect acting valves direct acting versus indirect acting so that's a very very important topic and there are many questions in gate from this topic and no where this topic is explained much okay so we'll talk about the direct acting first and then we'll talk about the indirect acting so if you talk about the direct acting valves first of all we need to understand what is the meaning of direct action so to any system let's say there is a system to any system if we provide some input if we provide some input then obviously from this system we will get some output for sure so at any given point of time if we increase our input and we obtain the increase in the output then the type of action is known as direct action so the type of action will become the direct action so direct action is very simple if you increase the input output will increase that's a direct action if you show anger to someone and finally you get the anger back that's a direct action so whatever is your action the same is the reaction that is known as the direct acting valves so whatever is expected that will happen so that becomes the direct action increase in, in the input increases the output and decrease in the input decreases the output so that becomes the direct action and if i talk about the indirect action this is just the reverse that means you get those things which are not expected like to any system the same input is given the same output is obtained and if you increase this input but the output decreases or if you decrease the input the output increases then the type of action becomes the direct action the type of action becomes the indirect action and the second action is our indirect action and in the indirect action to the same system if we give some input we get some output now as the input increases the effect on the output is not increase it's decrease and simultaneously if the input decreases the output will increase so if you get the reverse action then that type of action becomes the indirect action so whatever you do in a positive way if you get the results in a negative way then the type of action with you is indirect action and similarly vice versa if you do the negative you get the positive then the type of action is the indirect action so before understanding the nature of the control valve we need to understand what is the meaning of the indirect action and the direct action now we need to apply this concept onto the valve okay so by this we can understand the direct acting valves so if we talk about the direct acting valves so in the valves there are two things first of all the entry the entry is of air pressure air pressure air pressure signal becomes the entry to the control valve 
and because of the air pressure signal the movement of stem movement of stem becomes the result as air pressure increases the stem movement changes it can increase it can decrease so de depending upon the movement of stem the valves are known as direct acting or indirect acting and then with the movement of stem the flow changes flow rate changes so depending upon the movement of the stem the flow rate changes and this relation is given by the valve characteristics which are linear valve characteristics equal percentage valve characteristics and quick opening valve characteristics so this to this relation is covered by the valve characteristics and this to this relation is covered by the direct acting or indirect acting valves so this to this is a first order system this to this is a first order system and this to this overall becomes a second order system so valves are generally of the second order type because of the two effects in them first effect is change in the stem movement with respect to the change in the air pressure signal and then change in the flow rate with respect to the changes in the movement of stem now the general diagram of the valve is like this you can check the diagram in the kafner also any process dynamic books has the diagram so some flow is coming in and that flow is going out now in that the air pressure signal is coming and this is the diaphragm to which the stem is attached so this is the stem and this stem is attached with a plug so that is a plug this is the stem that is a diaphragm and obviously there are some springs attached to it and then there is entry and exit so that is the general structure of the valve so as the air pressure signal increases the stem movement changes as you can see in this diagram as the air pressure signal increase the stem is moving down as the air pressure signal decrease the stem will move up this type of action of the valve becomes the direct action direct action so what is direct action with the increase in the air pressure signal this is air pressure signal air pressure signal so with the increase in the air pressure signal stem this is stem stem movement increases with the increase in the air pressure if the stem movement increases in this direction then we can call this action as the direct action and this type of valve in which with the increase in the air pressure the stem is moving down and as the stem is moving down you can see here the valve will get closed so this type of action is become the direct action and this type of valve becomes the air to close valves air to close so air to close means when the air comes these valve closes when the air pressure decreases these valves get open so with the coming of the air with the increase in the air pressure signal the valve closes down so as the air pressure signal increases valve closes as the air pressure signal decreases the valve opens up this type of valve is known as air to close valves and normally these valves are open valves normally open because when the air comes then they closes down at the normal supply of air they remain generally open and these are also known as fail open fail open means at the condition of failure failure means when there is no air supply so at the condition of failure when there is no air supply then this valves remains fully open on that's why the name is fail open so i can call these valves as a fail open valves 
I can call these walls as normally open walls. I can call these walls as the air to close because when the air comes from the state of openness, they closes down and they are also known as the direct acting walls because with the increase in the air pressure, the stem movement increases. So from going from fully close to, so sorry, fully open to fully close, this becomes the direct action. So as the wall which is initially fully open, now it being fully closed, this is the positive stem movement from x equals to 0 to x equals to 1, this is the fully closed state, direct acting state. And the second type of action which is known as indirect action, indirect action. So in the indirect action what happens, the air supply is not from the top of the diaphragm, the air supply is from the bottom of the diaphragm. This is air supply. So now if instead of top, we are feeding the air from the bottom. So as the air pressure signal now increase, instead of pushing the stem downwards, this air pressure pushes the stem upwards, it goes up. So now in the initial case, when the stem is moving down, we called this direction or this movement as the positive movement. But now as the stem is moving up, this movement relatively becomes the negative movement. And that's why I will say that with the increase in the air supply, the stem moves upwards and that's why the type of action becomes the indirect action. Why? Because with the increase in the input, the output decreases. So this direction going up is decreased direction and this direction going down is an increased direction. Okay. So indirect action wall which becomes air to open walls. Why air to open? Because with the increase in the air supply, the stem is moving up and the stem is moving up it means it opens up and the flow can go. So as they go up, the stem increases on the positive, on the upper side, which is negative direction and the flow increases. So air to open, as air comes, stem goes up and the flow increases. So as the air comes, the valve opens up and that's why air to open valves are known as indirect acting valves. They are also known as normally closed, normally closed. Now what is the meaning of normally closed? Very simple that in the case of increased air supply, the stem goes up and the walls opens up. But in the case of normal air supply, they generally remains closed. So if the air supply increases, they gets open, but when the air supply is nunatum, very very less, then the stem closes down, remains closed and that's why they are known as normally closed. And they are also known as fail closed and why fail closed? Again the same meaning that in the condition of failure, failure, failure means when there is no air supply, there is no air supply. In the condition of failure, this valve remains closed. Air aegi to open hogi, if there is no air supply, then this valve remains fully closed. And that is the difference between the air to close walls and air to open walls. Air to close walls are direct acting walls and air to open walls are indirect acting walls.